Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Jackass Retro. My name is Matt, and it's Sunday night for me. It might be Monday morning for you or Tuesday afternoon, whenever it is. It's Sunday afternoon for me or evening. Uh, so that means it's time for another of our twice a week What Sold video. So this is going to take us from Thursday the 7th up through Sunday the 10th, which is tonight. And uh, in that time, we sold 54 postcards for a total of $485. Uh, not quite $10 average, but hey, we'll take it. Um, getting actually really close to a my first $1,000 week in postcards, uh, setting aside the biggest sale I had at around this time last year. So uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in. All right, let me just uh, make sure we get all set up here. And that's not even the beginning, that's the end. There's the beginning. Uh, so first up we have a uh, California agricultural postcard. Now, uh, the vast majority of these that I have all came from a buy that I made before I even started listing postcards on eBay, I won an auction. Uh, it was probably about a thousand postcards. I'd say 50 to 60% of them were all California architecture postcards. So the same customer uh, bought this one and several more we'll be seeing here in a few minutes. Uh, I had this one up for 1995. Uh, it was a little uncommon to see the onion field. You see a lot of other kinds of fields, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, but uh, they already had a number in their a number of cards in their cart. They made an offer. I accepted. It is, uh, yeah, very nice onion field. Unposted. Take a look at that. Ten bucks plus ship. Uh, not California agriculture, but this is uh, the Presidential Mountain Range from Intervale, New Hampshire. Nice chrome postcard. This one actually I listed very recently and it sold pretty quickly. Uh, not huge money, but even these uh, uh, chrome scenic views that really don't have a whole lot going on, but are, you know, a location somebody might want to collect or add to their collection. Um, couple of bucks plus shipping. I'll take it. Uh, we've seen this alley before. This is uh, Charlotte Street in St. Augustine, Florida. They used this image on postcards from the undivided back era uh, all the way up through linen postcards. I've seen this exact same image used. Uh, they didn't really update the, uh, the architecture, the image, the painting, anything. They just used the same plates and kept printing postcards on different kinds of boards and with different bats. Uh, this one here sold for $2.95 uh, plus shipping. All right, the next two um, went to two different buyers, but they're both from the uh, recent purchase I made uh, from an estate auction. They're both real photo postcards, and they are uh, both in Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania. So uh, here we have the uh, corner store. I did some research. I couldn't identify the name of the store, and uh, I'm going to not show the back here because it has some language that really it wouldn't be terribly acceptable nowadays and not something I want to put on YouTube. Uh, but in any case, the front is a very nice image and it sold for $31.46. And our next uh, real photo postcard in also Reynoldsville is the uh, residence of D. Nolan. Now, uh, D. Nolan, it's, I, from the research that I did was... Um, a landscape architect who uh, is responsible for some um, very cool parks in Reynoldsville and also in Ohio. 
Um, so this is a real photo postcard of his residence. And we've got a whole bunch of text here. So Herb Love, Herb Love, Herbert Love is the name of the person whose collection this was. And uh, kind of a cool history. We'll be seeing quite a bit of Mr. Love, I'm sure, in future videos. Moving right along, we got a, another real photo postcard. Uh, I've sold quite a few of these Alaska Real Photos recently. Um, they've gone, uh, generally speaking, to different buyers. And take a look here. What's interesting on this one is that this is an ivory carver. Um, you know, obviously, you know, this is, you know, we can't sell or trade ivory nowadays, but... Uh, the indigenous people of Alaska and um, some other places do have the rights to still hunt for ivory and carve ivory for that matter. Um, this one here sold for $14.95 plus shipping. Here we have uh, the Berkeley Pit copper mine in uh, Butte, Montana. I've sold quite a few postcards of this mine. It is a very popular subject. Uh, I don't really like the word bolo, but, you know, whatever. Bolo. Uh, $3.95 plus shipping. Listen, uh, I know there's some debate about, like, value of a be on the lookout thing. But you know what? If you're going through a big box of postcards and you see one for $0.25, cents, you know you can sell for 4 bucks. Might I direct your attention to the Berkeley Pit, open copper mine in Butte, Montana. All right, Library and Park in Tucson, Arizona. Clearly posted postcard. Linen. I'm sure you guys uh, probably know by now and at what a linen postcard looks like. But let's do this one more time. All right. So we've got, you can see here the texturing. A lot of times they have borders. Not always they'll have the white border. Sometimes it's a yellow border. Sometimes it's a slightly more orange border. Sometimes it's more white or off-white or cream or taupe or beige or other words for not white or off-white or slightly white or kind of white. Uh, in any case, here's this library. It's in Tucson. It's a linen postcard, and it sold for four forty six plus shipping. Hooray! All right, we got a stadium at the University of Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, of Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska. So here's the football field. You can see the uprights here and over here. You know, uh, beginning football season. You know, people get enthusiastic about the sports. So go sports uh this one unlike the last one does not have that textured border this what you see here is just like ink and smudges and whatever but this is a slick border so it's a, a little bit earlier we know that as well by the date right here 1929 someone was even nice to put it up here 1929 uh sometimes these postmarks can can be something good too I believe RPO is uh, has to do with like train station. All right, next up, Pretty Cottage Home in Sacramento, California, unposted. These uh, California homes, houses, bungalows, all uh, do pretty well for me. So um, this one here sold for fourteen dollars and ninety five cents plus one dollar shipping. Uh, you know, if you start searching for the houses and you can't find anything out there, might as well put it up there a little bit higher. All right. Uh, we're back to that customer's agricultural postcards. So the next three, four, five all went to the same customer. Uh, the total on these five was 30, 70, pardon me, pardon me, 29, 75 plus shipping. The other card was $10. So Roughly around $40 plus shipping, this customer was all in. So these cards sold basically on an average of about $5 a piece. Uh, I do offer 
25% off for buying five or more cards. And there is a minimum, there is a minimum value on that, etc. So um, here we have some sugar beets in a warehouse in California, unnamed location. M Rider Pub. That's a pretty common West Coast publisher for postcards. We also sold, this one is not agricultural, but still really cool. The topographical view of San Francisco and the Bay Cities. Uh, Pre-bridge, obviously, no bridge anywhere. Uh, it looks like here's the like ferry right there. I think this one's really cool. Um, 1924. Here we have some peaches drying, also in unnamed California location. At one point, this was 20 cents. Field of carnations blooming in midwinter in beautiful California. Location not specific, but we've got a uh, Pan Pacific Expo advertisement kind of on the back here. And finally, uh, hauling some watermelons in California. Big old cart of watermelons. This one is uh, named in Lodi, California. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one, 29.75. And we're on to this one. Stop saying this one. Anyways, this is Phillipsburg, New Jersey, the Key, key City Diner. Uh, I've got a couple of these. This is the first to sell. Got some really cool classic cars out here. Very cool old school diner sign. What's not to like here? Looks like we got an oil truck back here too. That's neat. Key City Diner, junction to Route 22 and 24, Phillipsburg, New Jersey. This one here sold for $5.36 on a offer sent to watchers. Not technically agricultural, but maybe kind of. Gathering poppies, winter scene in California. I think this one's more about the girl and the flowers than it is about the agricultural product, right? Um, $4.95 plus shipping. Rider. Here he is again. Just kind of a nice, pretty postcard. All right, Wichita County Courthouse in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, yeah, I've sold quite a few courthouses, as you know. This one's unposted. This is white border era, not linen. You can see very different here on these white borders, right? There's no, you don't see that cross hatching or texturing, even on the zoom in, which I didn't do on this one. <laughs> uh, this one here sold for six twenty-five dollars plus shipping. All right, so the next two went to the same buyer. They both came from my um, uh, the recent auction pickup that I did. Uh, they sold literally three minutes after I listed them, uh, which made me think somebody's got Somebody's got a uh, alarm set for Coneyot Lake in Pennsylvania. So uh, th I've got more, and those ones you can be darn sure went for or are listed for a higher price. One of them is a really nice night view, but you know when something sells that lightning quick, uh, I usually tells me I, I underestimated what they can go for. Um, so, uh, again, not a big fan of Bolo's, but Bolo, this one here sold for six ninety five. This is a undivided back. How do we know? Well, because it's got an undivided back on the back, just a straight address line. You were supposed to do all your writing down here. Like this person did. We are having a fine time here today. 1907. And then this one is the east side driveway of, I'm probably saying it wrong, Coneyot. Looks like Coneyot. 
Coney Yacht. Yep. This one's Divided Bat. The Erie, Pennsylvania Ham Series. And I love that there's just a picture of a ham. Uh, this one here sold for $7.95. Here we got Old Virginia City in Nevada. Nice sort of bird's eye view chrome postcard. Don't be fooled by the white border. This is a modern chromatic process for the printing. And uh, yeah, took uh, $4.95 plus shipping on this guy. Another chrome postcard here. Uh, this is uh, the Silver Dollar Lodge Motel. Cool classic cars right out front. Look at that. That's, I drive that. That's pretty cool. Um, not sure if the house in front is part of the motel, but maybe it is. It looks like the house is actually just unfortunately placed directly next to the motel. Or maybe it's the office. I don't know. Anyone ever stay there? Silver Dollar Lodge. D and Joe Ferraris. Maybe the D and... That's the uh, Ferraris residence. I would have expected a nicer car out front, though. $6.95 plus shipping. Uh, really cool Autobahn Society. Nighttime owls. Uh... You can't see it down here real well, but it is says the Audubon Society all the way down there. So this is the snowy owl. Uh, I believe this was uh, the, the thing that was endangered for some time in the Northwest, and has everyone got really mad because we they were a protected species and we couldn't cut down trees anymore, and there were jobs and things. Four dollars and forty six cents plus shipping. Center Street, Bath, Maine, bunch of cars, pretty cool. $5.95 plus shipping. Just a nice street view. It's it's not a real photo. The black and white is it is printed, but it's really got a nice sort of almost photorealistic quality to it. It says photo lux. It's not photo though. It's printed. If we zoomed in, we're gonna see them dots. Still a very cool postcard. $5.95 plus ship. Uh, he thinks he's people. Liberace of the monkey world at the monkey jungle in Florida. This is um, Miami, Florida, monkey jungle. Very popular tourist destination for quite some time. This one was 1950s. Uh Look at all these things they got. This one's got drums. This one's got a piano. There's a wagon over here for other tricks. Yep. People sure liked their monkeys back in the day. $5.95 plus shipping. The first Presbyterian church in Du Bois, Pennsylvania. 1912. Uh, common subject, I couldn't find this exact card. And there was good sales on a number of other, of the uh, this exact church. Um, but because I couldn't find this exact card, I decided to price it a little bit higher than what they nor the other ones go for. $14.95 plus shipping, and it actually sold overnight. So, sometimes I get it right. I like this one a lot as well. Another Florida tourist attraction, Marine Land. Very cool dolphin diving down to the guy in the suit here. Feeding time. They feed him below the surface. That's kind of neat. I think just a really cool looking postcard, right? Linen era. Uh, very All these marine, uh, marine Land ones are extremely, extremely common. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, this one only went for two ninety five, dollars plus shipping. Next up, we've got a view of the Freshwater Lagoon from Turnout on the Redwood Highway in California. Uh, 
pretty popular subject. Redwood Highway postcards do well. Uh, all right. I'm not going to tell you what era this is, but you tell me. Put it in the comments. Uh, I'll, I'll pause here for a second while you think about your answer. Just put Redwood Highway in the comments, and then what era of postcard production would you put it in? You done? Okay, good. Next. Uh, here we got uh, Columbia River High Columbia Gorge, rather, from the Columbia River Highway in Oregon. Nice overlook view. Uh, again, just a cool looking postcard. Not incredibly rare or anything like that. It, it was only $2.95. But you know what? Sometimes a thing can be very cool and not very valuable. So I'm happy with three bucks. It's a piece of cardboard for darn sake. With some printing on it. Just happens to be some pretty printing. Moving on. Here we have Hickory Creek in Joliet, Illinois. You know, I don't remember if this one came out of that. Nope, it did not. This one's been up for a while. Uh, not big money. Uh, $2.95 uh, plus shipping. It is, I mean, or pardon me, $1.95 plus shipping. It is just like a path and a river. And this you see a lot, right? It's different location, but same basic view. Path, river. Happened. We saw it all a minute ago in uh, Coniat Lake, right? Path, river. No biggie. All right. We've got a couple of different Titanic ones. They're spaced apart just by the... He didn't buy them right, one right after each other. Um, first one here, we've got the Titanic. This is a modern reproduction. You can tell by the barcode. Uh, so don't get excited. Uh, they got a toll free number, probably a website, uh, continental size. I don't sell a lot of continental size, but this one, uh, this one was an exception It's because it's the Titanic, right? Um, sold this one for $13 plus shipping. And now we're going to divert away from the Titanic and look at a different one. But then we'll come back to the Titanic, I promise. Here we have Spooning in Marionville, Pennsylvania. Now, this isn't obviously actually in uh, Marionville. This is, I call it, I call these, so imagine that there's no Spooning in Marionville. Because somebody put that on there with like a puffy pen or something. Uh, I call these generally novelty romance, and they're just like these pretty, like generic images of of people hugging or kissing or sitting on a park bench. Seems to always be happening. Um, I call it um, novelty romance. That's probably not the official name. There's probably a much more officially postcard name for it. But um, somebody basically took one of those novelty romance, grabbed their gold puffy pen and wrote spooning in Marionville, Pennsylvania, right across the front. Now, the thing is, there's not a lot of Marionville, Pennsylvania postcards. So uh, this one went up and it actually sold very quickly. Uh, I got 10 bucks plus shipping. I took an offer. Um, I only had it up for 1495 because it's not actually a view of it. And it's not actually a produced postcard for Marionville, right? It's just Somebody wrote it on there. So very happy about the uh, the 10 bucks that I got. And we're back to the Titanic. See, didn't let you down. Uh, the new White Star Line Titanic, 45,000 tons, nearing completion. Uh, obviously, reproduction. There's the barcode, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so these Titanic ones came from a collection of, uh, postcards I bought um, also at a state auction last November. It was largely Arkansas, North Carolina, and military-themed postcards. But they also had um, a few uh, in their collection that were um, 
reproductions and uh, a lot of them were titanic related a lot of them were world war ii related reproduction postcards so um this one here uh sold for 13 dollars and 45 cents free shipping uh i think i paid around like eight or nine dollars for the lot so um it took a while to sell but happy with the result here we have marion ohio itawa the residence of George W. King, the south front of the residence. Um, popular subject on postcards from the area and the era. Um, not particularly valuable. Uh, divided back. Here we go. Mr. Fred Shatler. Uh, we've seen that name before. Uh, unfortunate name, but a name nonetheless. I mean... And it's Aunt Hattie, so it's Mrs. Fred Shatler's. Her name is Hattie Shatler. Just saying. Uh, by the way, Hattie Shatler's postcard, three ninety five plus shipping. Here we have a very cool Albertype postcard. So Albertype uh, is the company that published it, published by. Here we go down here. Uh, Albert type. I can barely see it, but I believe it also refers to the um, printing process that was used because I think it was an Albert type refers, you know what, correct me in the comments, you guys who know a lot more than me, but it refers both to the printing process and to the company. Um, so Upper Main Street, Carmel, New York, see that SO sign way in the distance there? Probably could have mentioned that. Uh, unposted. Not sure where this came from. I feel like this came from the Goodwill auction lot. Let's see when I listed it. I don't know. Uh, $20 plus shipping. Missouri State Building at the Jamestown Exposition in 1907. This is Jesse Morrison. I mean, cool. Right, it's a, it's a building. Some columns. It looks like a plantation building, honestly, kind of. Um, it also not rare. Five dollars ninety five cents plus shipping, but still an interesting subject matter. Expositions, world's fairs, state fairs, any anything like that. Um, you, you should just go ahead and comp it and list it. It'll sell. Here we've got a nice, nice view of Boston, Massachusetts, the new skyline and the Mutual of Life building. Uh, I don't know what the old skyline looked like. This one's new. Probably this this here got added, this big monstrosity to the right. Or maybe this, this looks old. The middle thing looks old. So I'm guessing it's got to be this big one to the right. You can see by the cars, this is probably like 1940s, maybe late, late 1930s. Um, Giftorama plastic chrome postcard. So, yeah, that makes sense, though, right? This is sort of a art deco -y looking building. You know, look for those kind of clues. Try to figure it out for yourself. This one here sold for $6.95 plus shipping. Uh, it's just some swans hanging out. This is uh, East Lake Park in Los Angeles. Uh, again, popular subject. This one's got some really cool kind of color and toning to it. This sunset and back. It's just really pretty. This is actually what pretty true to the color of the card, too. 1921 divided back. Uh, $3.36 plus shipping. Here we've got a, another linen postcard, aerial view of the George A. Hormel Company. You all probably heard of the Hormel Company once or twice in your life. Cedar River in Austin, Minnesota. Uh, pretty happy with this one, 1995 plus shipping. This one also came from that collection um, last year, the uh, largely military in Arkansas collection. 
Um, there was also a number of factory postcards in there, which was a lot of fun to see a lot of those. They, they had quite a few. Um, I've been going through some of my older listings and um, taking my price if it's it's if it was at like 25 or 26 or below um, I've been bringing it down to 1995 removing any offer and adding shipping on top of that so I can get in under the standard envelope maximum and it's been working pretty well I mean you've been uh, there's been quite a few postcards been selling right at that $20 level and I don't have to deal with offers I don't have to deal with low ballers so it's been pretty nice um, you know, I'm going to continue experimenting with that. It seems to be working well so far. Here we have Buttermilk Falls in uh, Leechburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had this up for $34.95. I had a customer offer $20. Uh, I countered with a nice reply and said, why don't we just meet in the middle? This is a brand new listing. Um, I'm really not wanting to go lower than this. Uh, I don't know why they call it buttermilk falls because it doesn't look like buttermilk at all. Um, this one, so we sold it for twenty eight ninety five plus shipping, and uh, kind of did a, a zoom in, like yeah, and uh, yeah, sold pretty quickly. The unposted, this back is so cool though. When when there's no writing, which is not common for that, that it really stands out. I think it's neat. All right, moving right along. Propaganda. All right, V for victory. This is the V series. Now, in uh, during World War II, uh, the Kurt Tech company came out with a number of these sort of patriotic, you know, su uh, support or troops, uh, you know, do whatever you can at home kind of postcard. And... They all had a similar theme. They all have this V that goes down the middle that separates the three wartime images. I think they're really cool. Some of the coolest linen postcards, in my opinion, um, just because the look of them, the patri you know, how patriotic they are, really neat. There's, there we go. Here's another one, and I'll stop some time, I hope. So when you see this, linen era postcard free with the x out that means it's a soldier uh riding home because they did not have to pay postage while they were at war and i think that's still something that exists so uh moving uh price on this one was uh 676 uh went out on a offer to watchers oh jewel madin glade Og barnelig list. Vi ønsker dig alle velkommen. Vi hilser dig alle med jubilant rost. Tetsen gande velkommen. Gajul i Jesu navin. And it's a fox. What's really interesting here is obviously there it's Norwegian, I believe, but it's a Whitney-made uh, Massachusetts postcard. So, um. Still really cool. Uh, I've got a few of these. This one sold for $14.95 plus shipping. Whitney made, uh, I've mentioned it before right here. You can, you see this, this here uh, backing. Um, Whitney made, made some really cool postcards, I think. Um, usually they're like 1920s white border era, but I think they're also late, um, late divided back. Um, I like the Fox. He kind of reminds me of Buster a little bit. All right. So this is the surf at Popham beach, Maine. Uh, this one sold lightning quick. Uh, I, on, this is one of those where I was on the fence on how I was going to price it. Probably should start setting those aside and doing more research or contemplation or something. It sold very quick, $7.95 plus shipping. And what I really like this about this one is it re reminds me a lot of a 
very famous painting by uh, Katsushika Hokusai. And the painting is called The Wave. And you may be familiar with it. Uh, it's a fairly iconic image. There it is right there. Uh, now, what's really cool about this image is, is it's considered to be like a mathematically perfect image. Nobody knew it up until around the 80s, but um, he was, it basically uses fractal geometry in its creation. So essentially, the arc of this wave here is fractalized in that same arc on every single one of these little curls here, the same way as a fractal image would uh, break off and be infinitely repeating itself. So I'm not saying that this copied this, but I mean, maybe I am saying that. It looks, it looks at least inspired by it. Um, $7.95 plus shipping. And you got a free art lesson. All right. Uh, this is the YMCA building in the voice. I think I'm saying that right. I, I'm not saying it. I know I'm saying it slightly sarcastically. The voice. <laughs> $25 uh, plus shipping. This one did come from the collection, as we know, from Mr. Herbert Love. Divided back postcard. Super cool. 25 bucks. I'm more than happy with that. All right, here we have a very nice Fred Harvey postcard. This is one of those publishers you want to try to squeeze that name into your subject line if you can do it. We're looking at the Canyon Diablo in Arizona, uh, Dodge City uh, train, pardon me. Unposted, there's that Fred Harvey logo. It's a Detroit Publishing, Fostent card, other things, if you can squeeze them in, good to get it there. Uh, this is not a white border card. This is a divided back card. Uh, even though it has a white border, these are not technically the white border. Next. Oh, price. Uh, this one here sold for $5.36 plus shipping. Another uh, Pennsylvania postcard by from the collection of Mr. Herbert Love. 1911 divided back. Entrance to the suspension bridge in Warren, Pennsylvania. You know, I, I this is one of those where, you know, I knew uh, there was a good sell through on the subject matter, but I couldn't find another example of this. I priced mine at about twice what the next highest was, um, or uh, about about the same in there somewhere. Um, Twenty bucks plus shipping sold in about twenty four hours. Bridges always good subject matters. I did a little zoom in like there. Didn't really need to. It looks the same. Uh, but moving on. Here we have a. Houser and all about the native households is performed. So this is actually a Mexican postcard. Um, interestingly enough, uh, it was in a collection of Mexico postcards. Uh, but yeah, interesting. I put it up for two bucks, uh, and it, that's what it sold for. I don't know. I, I I don't really have a lot to say about this one. It's uh, the, I think the first time I saw it, I was like, ha, uh, Mexican house servant. This isn't the, probably not something I really want to get out there, put out there on a postcard. I mean, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I did a little more research. This is a Mexican house servant in Mexico serving Mexicans. So what do I care? Two bucks. Next. Simpson County Courthouse in Mendenhall Hall, Mendenhall, Mississippi. Uh, this has been up for a little while, but uh, I stood tall on my price. I knew what I had. Uh, very, very uncommon 
uh, image of this particular courthouse, and I just waited for the buyer. And they eventually came, uh, and they bought it for thirty-four ninety-five plus first class shipping. It is a linen. Oh, nope, nope. Divided back postcard. This is not linen. It looks like it could be, but it's not. Interesting. It's probably a, a chrome era that's printed basically using the same image they were using to make linen postcards on a different card stock. My guess, anyways. Uh, next up, Manchester, New Hampshire High School. Uh, not super valuable, still kind of neat. High schools I usually list. I, they, You never know the ones that are going to sell, and most of them do. This is a nice divided back era one, or undivided back era one. Hugh Light and Company, another one of those uh, popular publishers. When did I put this up? Yeah, this was uh, from the Just in Time Flipping uh, collection or lot that I picked up from another reseller, Just in Time Flipping. Go check out his channel. He's he's interesting cat and find some really cool stuff. Hell of a negotiator too. Just in Time Flipping. Moving right along. All right. This is a nice chrome postcard. Uh, Glacier National Park, St. Mary Lake Citadel Mountain, $1.95 plus shipping. Another plastic chrome. Again, objectively cool, right? Like that reflection. I, I always like that reflection in the, the older postcards because that color really kind of comes out. I, th I think it's neat. Uh, another sort of California agriculture postcard. And I believe uh, this one sold for $3.95 plus shipping. Again, this one went to or came from Mr. Herbert Love. Uh, I actually just sold, I think this was in a video, the same card, not the exact same one, but the same, same card, uh, like two videos ago. And I just basically like uploaded new photos and relisted. All right, we've got the Mosque of Sultan Amid in Constantinople. Not, not Istanbul, but Constantinople. Uh, very cool. This one came from the lot I purchased from Michon's auction last, uh, what, May now? Somewhere around there. Um, $3.95 plus shipping. Uh, if you do have a uh, Istanbul postcard, make sure you put Constantinople in the title as well. Or if you've got, or vice versa, if you've got Constantinople, uh, you should put Istanbul in the title because every guy in Constantinople has a girl waiting in Istanbul. All right, finally, uh, the Bow Arts Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. Very cool multi-view linen, two different dining rooms. I think this is neat. Took a little while to sell. The Henry Clay Hotel, where did I sell it for? $4.95 plus shipping. And with that, we are done. So thank you all very, very much for watching. Uh, we are getting really close to 1,000 subscribers. And when we do, we're going to have a little bit of a celebration. Stay tuned for more details on that when it comes. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the support, the comments, the watching the videos. If you find this stuff helpful, you know, let me know in the comments. There's other ways to support the channel down below. Um, ideas for future videos would be great. Uh, for now, we're just going to keep doing these uh, twice a week. Uh, I find them very helpful or found them very helpful when I was learning, and hopefully you feel the same way. Um, so thank you again. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a great weekend or week. Bye.